here I am. I finally made it to the Pematstal Monastery in Pokhara, Nepal. It was a long trek, but it was well worth it. This is the main entrance. I'm gonna pan around so you can see there's some prayer flags and and we're in the outskirts, actually on the opposite side of the mountain of the Fishtail Lake. And um, it's kind of far away, but it's nice and peaceful here. Pokhara is actually a beautiful little town. And so, <clears throat> there's one of the little monks here. Namaste. And there's the beautiful entrance again. And this is where the offices and the classes are. And over there are some kids playing soccer. Here I am at the uh, monastery in Pat Pokhara. And I am looking out my window and I have a magnificent view of the monkeys. I'm so excited. So there they are. I was told to be careful because they like to come up here and pill for people's passports. I think they're trying to get out of the country. But it is a beautiful country, so just take a look at the view from my window and I'm looking forward to getting to know the kids getting to know my friends down there, the monkeys and it's going to be a great experience This is the prayer hall at the Pemastal Monastery in Nepal It's really beautiful and you need to take off your shoes when you go in there and turn off your cell phones I actually can't wait to check it out it's got some beautiful murals. I'm here with Lobsang and he's giving me a tour of the hall, the prayer hall. And I'm just going to pan around because it is utterly beautiful. Look at these murals. Oh, it's amazing. So beautiful, love song. This way. And what are these things here? Is this the sand? Uh, the feelings. So when we buy the statue, we need to feel the body of the statue oh. with uh, these things. Okay. Then after feeling the statue, then we need to do the consecration. Mm -hmm. Then it will be valuable. Okay. So without consecration, without the feelings, uh, invaluable. I no, got not it. valuable. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I have to tell you, Lobsang, this is so beautiful. And what is this right here? Uh, mandala. Mm -hmm. This is a sand mandala? Yes. Wow. So that is in July, mm -hmm. June, July, August, uh, uh, the students uh, had uh, the summer retreat. Mm -hmm. So during the summer retreat uh, time, they met it. Now we will keep it, keep it until October. So they meditate on the mandala during uh, their retreat? Yes, yes. Okay. So in October we will make a new mandala. So it will be for exhibition until that time. It's gorgeous. I can't believe it's actually sand. It's amazing. And the October mandala will be even more gorgeous than this. Really? Yes. It must take a long time to do. So we, it took uh, two days. Two days? Yes. That's not a long time. I'm impressed. It would take me two years. If there are only three, four people, then it will take four or five days. Oh, okay. Uh, what an honor to be here. Is it okay for me to go this way? Yes, this way. There's Lama Kunga. And who's this Lama over here? This uh, son of His Holiness, the Sajja Twinsen. Okay. And His Holiness, the Sajja Twinsen, is the head of the Sajja tradition in Tibetan Buddhism. And over here? And he is also the son of the brother of, of uh, His Holiness, the Sajja Twinsen. And he was here in the recent time. And he was here for three months. And he lives in USA. What part? Seattle. Seattle.
And this is a, a Buddha meditating where he's been yes. for a long time and he's very skinny? Yes, so on the walls uh, we have the life history of the Buddha. Oh, mm. okay. So on the ceiling we have the auspicious uh, symbols. So all of these are the auspicious symbols? Uh, yes. Is that Jeannie and Steven? <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it. Look at that. I'm impressed. That's very cool. This is the call for the afternoon philosophy class. You can go. I can? Yeah. Cool. Like Jay, you missed my Tibetan class. Where were you? I was waiting for you. Next day. <laughs> philosophy class into the praying temple. prayer wheel. Here I am with Lobsang. He's giving me a tour of the monastery and here are the tailors. And what they're doing is they're preparing these um, costumes for dances they do and uh, at the different monasteries and so this is actually one of the headpieces and I mean I'm just blown away at how beautiful everything is you can look they have these drums and all of this is for in preparation for their uh, religious dances and it's just I'm blown away at the beauty so I am going to hand over the um, the camera to Lopsang so he can take a picture of me and you can see what I'm wearing are you recording? Yes. Okay, so these are some of the beautiful costumes that they make. And, um, and this is one that, if you can see the detail, it's just stunning. I am totally impressed with the work that they do here. Thank you, Lopsan. Yeah. Here I am in the tailor room of the monastery with all my helpers. And yes, yes. what I was showing them how to do with some of the scraps is this is actually a bead made from this um, 
it's basically just a uh, paper that came with a sample of some toothpaste. And so I cut it into long triangular strips and I made some beads. So I showed them that they could actually make these beads with them. And then we did some samples with the fabric. They're not finished. And these are leftover fabric from the costumes they make. But I need to put a sealer on this so that they look more like beads. Right now they don't. And basically I took some of these. Um, the sticks are basically from the, the uh, grass outside. So... I used that and then I showed them to just use regular um, glue and then to put a sealer on the end and here's another little bead we made. And then what I did is I got the idea with the scraps and you can see that they're just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous scraps. And so I asked them to basically make some quilts. So this is a sample of a quilt that I put out for them from all the leftover scraps that usually get tossed out that they can actually repurpose and make pillowcases with them. So anyway, we're going to continue going through, see here's some more of the scraps. And this is from the costumes that they make. Put it on. Go ahead, put it on. And so we're going to continue finding ways to repurpose this. Very nice. <laughs> so, so she's going to put the, the costume on him. That looks very nice. You look like a llama. Thank you. Playing soccer with a basketball. Now that's got to be hard. Now that's a kick. And with a basketball. That's impressive. Here I am with my boys from my class. These are my college boys. We just got through uh, having an amazing English class and they are using their drawstring knapsacks. Hey! Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. And so inside the knapsacks, we have donations from Mitch Kaplan from Books and Books, and the knapsacks were donated by uh, the Downtown Development Authority, and then we have also something in there donated from Suzanne Fontana, Mire Chonsi Gonzalez, and then we also have things in there from Sue Thomas. So we have lots of donations from lots of friends, uh, Jorge Khalil, that I'm very grateful for, and so um, the guys are very happy with their presence, and that's it for now. Bye. Here I am walking around the grounds, and just found a cute little furry friend over there in a tree. They are adorable, but I hear everyone say they're little terrors because they go through everything, and you have to be careful. But I'm going to try to help them out and give them plenty of food by growing papaya trees. That should keep them happy. And I just stumbled across uh, this, and look, there's a big boy up there having a good time. Isn't he gorgeous? Oh, this is so beautiful. Here are the monks getting ready to do their llama dance. This is something they do every evening at 6.30. And what they do is they have, um, it looks like a braided flag. 